What's up guys, Mike Lewis here and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe. And without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. Okay, Anastasia, thank you for hopping on here today and taking the time to do this. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for having me on here. Yeah, it's finally nice to kind of do this thing face to face. We were uh, <laughs> kind of coordinating through the um, you know text, which sometimes isn't always so clear. But um, it's good seeing you. Good meeting you. How uh, how you been? You healthy during this past crazy year that it's been? Yes, I am extremely healthy. Um, I am extremely pregnant. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm due in November, so I'm having a little boy, and um, yeah, healthy, healthy, and feeling really, really good. Nice, that's great to hear. Um, are you still? Uh, where did you say prior to the real world that you were uh, from? Are you still there? Um, prior to the real, yeah, I I lived in Michigan my whole life, just just outside of Detroit. Um, and I'm not there anymore. I actually live in the country in Virginia now, Southern Virginia. Um, so right on the bay. Oh, wow. So you and I definitely have two different spectrums then of uh, kind of the whole scene with, uh, you know, the whole uh, COVID stuff because being a city guy and then Virginia, that's like night and day, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. Um, but yeah, um, we're staying safe. We're all vaccinated over here, and everything's going well. Yeah. I got to ask, though, because obviously you being in your adulthood now, I'm not sure if the uh, what the whole bird nickname still applies with you now or if that's even a, a thing. Um, no. Um, sorry, I'm so dumb. I just ate a gummy worm. Hey, you're good. Um. No, that was a nickname that a friend had given me who um, we just kind of fell out of like a relationship, like a friendship. And so it's not applicable anymore, but it's okay. I understand like the desire and the urge to want to call me bird. <laughs> what, what was the stem of that nickname? Was it because you were tall or what was it? I have no idea. I called her Ducky and she called me bird. Oh. Yeah. So bird thing then yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah it wasn't there wasn't like a, a like it just happened and then it stuck and then yeah i, I kind of figured because it was your you were tall because from what i remember i think like most of the girls on portland minus jess were like really tall like i know joy was like 5'11 and i was like six foot yeah we were a bunch of tall girls that's for sure um I thought I was for sure going to be the tallest, and then um, Naya ended up showing up, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about what you were up to pre-real world, though. Um, obviously, I mean, it's like, what, 10, almost 10 years, so it's like, you know, throwing you way back now. Um, from what you remember correctly, I wanted to hear maybe what you were up to prior to real world, obviously, and like maybe what your ambitions were. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, it was a very long time ago. I will be honest with you. I was doing what a lot of 19-year-olds and 20-year-olds are doing, which is just, like, just going out in the world and, like, still kind of being a child, but, like, having this, like, all of this, like, freedom and, like, little pieces of responsibility kind of. Um, you know, I was, I was just, I was having fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what I was doing prior to the real world. I was, um, doing some modeling stuff, like local modeling stuff and, um, just kind of like dipping my toes into the, to life, I guess. Mm -hmm. So did you have any ambitions for like getting onto TV or how did that kind of play out with like you trying out? Um, yeah, so I did. I, it wasn't, 
I was always very into theater growing up and singing. So I did a lot of, um, and, and Broadway, like watching Broadway and things were like a very huge part of my life. Um, so I was very much always into the campy kind of like singing and like acting and uh, humor. And so I was like tooling around with comedy and skits at the time, like back in 2008, nine, it was like kind of like the YouTube was still fresh. So like I actually was, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so I had a, I had a, like a, a friend at the time that I was actually doing like some skits with out in LA, excuse me, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so I was never intending to be on something like the real world. I, I wanted to, from, for my life and for myself, I, I actually wanted to, to do something more like, more like that, you know? Um, and then I just kind of fell into the real world situation. <laughs> so, yeah. How did exactly did you try out did you show up to one of the open casting calls was it something that maybe you signed up for online how did that come about so um actually the first when I tried out it was actually for the St. Tom St. Thomas was before me right yeah mm -hmm. it was actually that season I was young um my grandmother had <laughs> this really like gonna make me cry because my grandma just passed last year but um she found an article like in our paper that had said there was like a casting audition at one of these like local bar chain I feel like it was bar Louie I don't know um and she cut it out of the newspaper like an old lady does and like gave it to me and so like at her like urging I went to it and I, I'll be honest with you I really hadn't watched the real world but I went to this casting audition and it was, it was like, I felt like a fish out of water, to be honest with you. Uh, I made it all the way to the finals and then they called me and told me no. So that kind of crushed me because once I was like invested in it, I felt like I wanted it, you know? And then with the second, with the, with the Portland casting, if I remember right, they called me and I just did the last, like the end steps of it. I didn't do too, too much like the second time around. And at that time, I was honestly a little bit like, I kind of, I probably went overboard with like certain like aspects of like trying out, like maybe made myself out to be more traumatic than I actually was and stuff just because like, I wanted it so badly. I really wasn't myself. Like, I'll be honest with you. You know, I was a kid. I was, like, semi-acting. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> that That's... So, you made it to the finals, obviously, uh, St. Thomas, you just said, and, and didn't make it. Did you try out a second time for the Portland, or did they just remember you from the first time and called you? No, that's what I... Yeah, that's what I... That's what I meant. Um, so, they, call, they called me, and I kind of was like... It, I don't know. It was out of my mind. I hadn't thought about it since I got turned down. And so they called me and they said, like, you know, would you be willing to try out for this one? And then I feel like there was just like two rounds that I had to do. Whereas like before it was like quite a bit of like you had to get through this part and then this part and then this. And then so I kind of was like expedited a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, I still had to do kind of the same thing. And. I did it. That's kind of interesting to hear you say because obviously, you know, I spoke with um, two of your other Portland cast members and like I definitely from the pattern that I'm seeing, it seems like the casting process for Portland was a lot more like straightforward than say like a regular season because like um, Avery, uh, she didn't even like try out like they were kind of just doing tryouts at her obviously like Hooters place and then like they just kind of like oh you want to be on the show and then I think Marlins was pretty fast tracked too and then obviously from what you're just telling me um, they actively like called you out after you tried out from the previous season so it wasn't like a whole process that you went through for the first time you know yeah I still had to you know fly out and drive out to a couple places, but it, it definitely wasn't the same type of pressure um, as the first one, or as like when I initially tried out, yeah. I don't well, know why I did that. Maybe it was like, um, 
maybe they had like a few people left over from trying out previously or something or like I don't know I don't know why they did that it's interesting hey I mean you might have caught the uh and we'll get into it with the next point but I think you might have caught a little bit of the luckier end of the spectrum because the St. Thomas season like they were kind of just like they stuck them on an island and like uh I think like they only went out like a handful of times because every single time they were uh, going out they had to like pay for like the uh, boat or something like that the boat like broke down and it was like a mess from what cast members have told me so you might have got a little lucky yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> i feel so lucky <laughs> i'll ask you though what what was your feelings like when they tell you like okay you're going to portland like were you hoping for something else i remember them telling me it was portland i was thinking it was going to be this it told me when I was there, um, it was like the last, like the final round of like casting. They tape you. They kind of sit and interview you. Um, and they were like, how do you feel about Portland? And I was like, like, do I need to get a bunch of flannels? I, I said something like along the line of that. Like, I didn't know anything about Portland. Um, so I wasn't really like, it wasn't tropical. I know that. <laughs> But I wasn't, like, feeling... Well, yeah, I mean, w w when I think of Portland, I just automatically think of Seattle. Um, and when I think of Seattle, I think of, like, kind of, like, I don't know, dark, dreary, rainy. I mean, I don't know what it was like by you guys. It's a little different, obviously, Portland, Seattle, but not too far from each other, I guess. So that's what it immediately comes to my mind. Yeah, I wasn't very, like... I don't know. I had traveled a lot, like, at that age, but, like, it wasn't, like, now where I'm, like, familiar with, like, different areas as much. So, like, when they said Portland, I really didn't have a lot of, like, I knew where it was, and, then, like, that was pretty much it. I didn't really. What was, like, the nightlife like there in Portland? Was it, like, um, exciting or, like, no? I'm trying to remember because I was very, I was a very unfun person at the time. <laughs> it was. Like I was a very, I was like very caught up in some personal things. And so I was like very unfun, um, which is unfortunate because like, I do think as a, as like, when I was younger, I probably could have had a lot more, like, a lot more fun. But at the end, it kind of started to, like, open up more. Anyways, um, yeah, the nightlife was, it was fun because it was really odd. Um, there was just a lot more, I don't know, like, at some of the places I remember, like, Dante's and, like, you know, there was, like, kind of burlesque shows and things like that and and to be honest with you like some of those things I was seeing like for the first time and so it was it felt like really scandalous and like fun and <laughs> yeah uh, other than that though so, like our group was weird they kind of stuck to like the same couple places though and uh, there was a point where I was just like I don't fucking want to go to the same splash bar again and again i think it was called splash bar honestly um so yeah i don't know were you guys kind of rotating like all the same places um as far as like when you're going out to like bars and stuff like that um were we going to the same places like like the selection choice of bars for you guys like were they kind of just sending you guys to the same ones all the time yeah, um, there was quite a bit that they were able to, like, give us clearance to film at. So, I don't know. There was a good variety. But, you know, we're humans, and, like, humans get stuck on a couple places, and then they're comfortable, and then that's just what they want to do. So I'm pretty sure, pretty sure we were guilty of, like, finding a comfort bar, and then that was kind of, like, our spot more. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'm interested now to hear your perspective on kind of like the um, whole dynamics of the house, obviously, because like I actually had to go back and rewatch a little bit to get a little bit of a better, um, you know, understanding from at least like what was shown. And it kind of seemed like because from what I remembered, I always was under the impression that Johnny and Avery were kind of cooped up and then like you and Jess were the outliers. But then like kind of watching it over again, I was like, oh, wow, like you were actually kind of buddied up with Avery for a bit. Um, 
and then Naya came into the house, and that's when things kind of shifted. Um, you and Avery kind of had your little, um, you know, I don't want to say tiff, but like, kind of, you guys weren't necessarily with the whole idea of hanging out with Jessica. Um, so, what was like your thoughts, at least on like your personal dynamics with the house? It's a lot different now, at, like as a thirty-one-year-old versus how I was feeling then. Um, I was a brat. <laughs> I, like I won't even lie to you. Um, when I was twenty-one, I was still I was still very much a child, um, and it shows. And I acted like it. I mean, I was I was very self-centered. Um, like some of my regret. Okay, so. First, like, the dynamic was I was trying not to be the sloppy mess so hard on television that I ended up being, like, not really who I was in general um, and kind of, like, an unfun person. So, like, for a while, I was just, like, constantly monitoring, like, what I was doing and, like, all that stuff. And, like, so that was, like, one little aspect of it. But, like... um. I, I liked the girls, like, to be honest with you. I enjoyed a Avery. I, I enjoyed... <laughs> I was petty as hell to Jessica. Um, I don't... Like, it wasn't exactly the way that, like, if I can remember... I haven't watched the show in literally, like, 10 years, so, like... But, like, it wasn't exactly the way that the show made it out to be um, as far as her and I were. But I wasn't nice. I wasn't kind to her, and there really was, like, no reason for me to be like that. Like, truthfully, there was never a reason for me to be like that. Um, that was all me being insecure, and I probably lost a really good friend, like, from that. Um, I think she actually, like, even though, like, you know, we, we all don't like every single quality about each other, like, I, I there was just, like, no excuse now as, like, a 31-year-old looking back for, like, the just being, like, petty. I wasn't, like, cruel, but I was, like, petty, you know? But I spent most of my time with Naya and Marlon, um, really. Like, the majority of my time was spent with Marlon in a recording studio doing music. He was doing music. I was doing music. It was never shown on television for whatever reason, but, um, and Naya was always there with us, and then Naya, me, and him would just get into, like, the funniest stuff together. Um, I had a blast with those two. They were, like, the reason why I stayed and, like, enjoyed myself. Um, I wasn't able to get to know Johnny and Jordan and Avery in the ways that, like, now I would have wanted to. You know, I really didn't get to, like, know them on a super personal level. Um, yeah. Wow, yeah, because I don't really – the editing at least made it seem like it was – you and, like, Avery, I want to say, for the first, like, half of the season were, like, you know, buddied up. And, like, they, the edit kind of tried to make Marlon seem like he was off on his own, like, all the time. At least from what I remember. Yeah, that's just not the – it just – it's just not the case. Like, um, me and Avery, like, we were friends. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, we, we were friends and, like, we would do stuff together. But as soon as Avery got with Johnny, and this is no, like – I have no qualms about it or anything, but sh she was kind of like with Johnny and Jordan the whole time. And like, I just, um, wasn't, um, but it wasn't ever anything like personal. We just kind of like, we're all going different ways, but, but yeah, Marlon, no, Marlon, it was Marlon, me and Naya, like pretty much most of the time we were there just like all the time. Yeah. So, so you and Marlon, because um, obviously we spoke about it, like, you guys, like, still keep up, right? Every, I don't keep up with him, like, super frequently, but he is the only person that, like, I, cons like, consistently texts me a few times a year. Um, I love him. I don't think, there, there's, like, not many people that are like Marlon. Marlon's just a really solid person, and he's been like that. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> but oh, no, you're he's been like that. Um, he didn't have a lot of character flaws like to work on, like a lot of us do and did. Um, he has been that way from the beginning. He's been just a solid, good human being 
um, since I met him. And I can't say that about many people at all. Yeah. No, he's definitely one of a kind. I've gotten the pleasure to uh, speak to him a few times. Um, thank you for uh, sharing that, though. Um, yeah, I'm because- curious. That's, okay. that's just, I really care. Like, I care about him, you yeah. know. He, he was kind to me when I might not have deserved it, you know. I, I, Like, I wasn't mean to him, but, like, there was times when he could have been, like, you know, he needed to snap, snap out of this. And he was always just straight kind to me. And, like, I appreciate that from him. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, though, because um, what was it like with Nia? Po- I mean, you guys, obviously, you just mentioned that you and her were, like, you know, tight on the show. What was it like uh, post show? Because if I'm being honest, and I think most people would agree with me, when you look at like real world cast, like obviously like post show, like some remain like family close, and you guys seem to have like a lot of like hostility and tension um, built up post show. And if I remember correctly, I remember Joy and Naya got like really cooped up for a minute. And um, what what was like your whole dynamic with um, Naya after the show? I'm trying to remember everything. Um, me and Naya were very close. Um, but, like, I'm going to start kind of talking about mental health at this point, like, about myself, um, because I was a very lost and, like, insecure and pretty like I mean the only way that I can put it is like I I was I was a sick individual like throughout a lot of my 20s to be honest with you not like sick like um like evil or anything like that but I was like I didn't understand my emotions I didn't know how to cope with things I was depressed extremely depressed um for most of my 20s um and it when you don't take care of yourself and you don't understand what's going on with you you make a lot of poor decisions and and, um and I did I made a lot of poor decisions um and I probably wasn't the best friend to people um so we were we were really we were really close for a while but I think probably after a certain point Naya understandably was like I can't keep just being a shoulder for this person to lean on, like when they're not like seeing what's right in front of them and they need to fix it and everything. And she was like, she was really phenomenal to me. Um, She knew that I had like some things going on, like with depression and stuff. And um, actually she, last time I heard from her was like my last, was a suicide attempt that I had. Um, And she was like desperately trying to get in contact with me on Instagram. But, like, um, I just think, like, she probably was, like, exhausted with it, you know. And, like, I understand that. Um, I'm rambling at this point. But I understand that. Um, Joy, I don't understand. I don't know what happened with Joy. (laughs) I don't know. Um, It was weird. Like, I I got along well with her. she was a very sweet girl when she was there for like the couple weeks, you know. And then after the show, sorry, my dog is in the other room, so I'm gonna be making some noise. Um, and then after the after the show, her and Naya got close, I guess. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know. She just, I don't think she liked me much anymore, or like anybody. I'm talking about Joy, but yeah. I never had like any feelings anyway about her. Like, as far as, like, I don't have any animosity towards her or anything. I just, I don't really know, like, what happened there. I don't even know, like, was it just me or if it was, like, other people, too. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, though, because, you know, obviously we just kind of got into the mental health aspect of things. It wasn't, like, too long, right? in between the gap of like filming real world going straight to the challenge do you think like that like short amount of time just like jumping right into another show is maybe like had a hand in like some of the things that you're feeling or did you have these emotions like prior to being on tv i think the television aspect um with the 
with mental health and the show, I don't think that, like, the show, like, I don't think that, like, the show is what caused my problems. I think the show exacerbated everything that, like, I was dealing with, and the show traumatized me. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't think that, like, some people are equipped to deal and handle with um, being on shows like this. Um, the short period, like you said, in between the real world show and then the challenge, um, which I didn't have any business going there. And like, I had no idea even what I was getting. I've never watched that show prior to, to going out there. Um, but yeah, I wasn't like, I didn't give myself help in that, in between those two shows, like in those few months, I, I was going out at night and drinking and not handling my alcohol and making poor decisions and crying in a pool of like my own sadness because I didn't understand like what I was going through. Um, I like spent a lot of my 20s extremely confused about who I was as a person and what was going on with me it like before I really understood so I, I don't think it's always the you know it's not the, necessarily the source of the problem but I think that like it doesn't help people who are sick these these shows yeah right and you got to remember like you're still at a very young age going and doing this show or these shows rather and it's almost like a pressure cooker type of situation, you know? It's not like you're going on TV and you're, you're, you know, you're an actress and you're reciting lines or playing a character. Like, you're yourself, you know what I mean? So everything that, like, you know, you're doing is, like, Anastasia. It's not like Anastasia playing a character, like, in, an, in a film, you know what I mean? So that's definitely going to play a lot more and weigh a lot more on your head. Um, you know, being obviously, like in a situation that's like magnified, you know what I mean? Um, what was like the STEM maybe post show for you? Obviously like having to like, cause you go and actually live out a situation and then have to relive it obviously three to five months down the line um, when it's premiering. What was, um, did you even watch like yourself on the challenge at all or how hard maybe was it to watch? The challenge or the real world? The real world, I, like, the real world, the only thing I, like, really cringe over with the with Portland is, um, is that, like, the guy that I had been dating at the time, which, like, he, he had a, a personal drug problem, and, like, I'm not trying to air anyone's problems, and, like, I have long since let this go. Everyone's let this go. But at the time, I was, like, trying to protect that information from coming out on TV. So I look straight, like, overreactive in, like, our arguments and, like, at the, at this, like, one of those episodes that he was visiting. Um, but, like, the reason I was upset was that he was using again and, like, he was there using again. Um, and... So, like, that, to me, like, because I wasn't honest about it on the show, um, I kind of, like, I might have been doing the right thing for him at the time, but I didn't do the right thing for me because, like, they didn't know what to do with that episode, kind of, I feel like, the editing and stuff, because, like, they didn't know how to explain, like, why I was upset and, like, um, yeah, so, I don't know, like, the real world Portland didn't, like, th those are, like, all things that I can recover from. Yeah. I feel like seeing those things on TV and, and stuff, um, especially now, like, I, I definitely am, like, well, this is, like, a lot of the same things that, like, children, not, I hate to keep saying children, but to me, I, f like, the growth period between then and now, like, I feel like I was extremely young, mm -hmm. um, and, like, so many of these things are, like, typical things that that age does. But it's just not, like, recorded. It's yeah. never recorded. So they don't have to, like, repeat it in their head. Um, but, 
The challenge was a different situation for me. The challenge um, traumatized me for years um, and like really set me down a really uncomfortable path of um, depression, um, loneliness, like isolation. And I can definitely talk about that kind of stuff if like that's what if you want to discuss that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to get kind of further into that because obviously, you know, um, you, you want to off the grid after kind of that stint on the show. I want to know, like, maybe um, what was like the stem of like your emotions and feelings about it? And um, did the fans uh, potential negativity over the Internet play a part in that? So I think to ex to explain that, I have to like go to the beginning and explain like my experience on the That's, channel. Do that. Um, so I want to preface this by saying that like um, at this point, like after I've been through therapy, suicide attempts, like getting myself healthy, um, I believe in like self responsibility um, as a as a as a virtue, like taking responsibility for like your mistakes, owning up to them and knowing that like you, you can be a better person now, like you can be a better person tomorrow. You can be a better person than in the next minute. So I don't want any of this to come off as like me not taking responsibility for like my behavior on the show, but there is a lot of context like behind um, the things that like were on TV Sorry, this is literally my first time talking about this to, like, anybody. Um, and I think that that it's important to know, like, that context. Um, so I'll start with saying that, like, in, in my opinion, um, the challenge um, from, from what I experienced, and obviously, like, everyone's different, but I think it fosters a very misogynistic and cruel and toxic environment. And I don't think that a lot of people who are like me um, can thrive in that at all. Um, and I think that, and, and I know like I probably get a lot of like people complaining about that, like you're just not a competitor, like whatever, yada, yada. Um, it's pretty obvious like <laughs> that these, this show is like, especially if you're one of these like typical alpha males on this show that is like bringing in a lot of like viewers, they're geared towards the men on the show. And I don't think that they're out, they're fair to women um, in the same way that like in my daily life, like I would be fair to like my friend or something like that, you know? Um, so again, in my opinion, it's a very like toxic culture there to begin with. So when, when I first went there um, and Nobody used to believe me for this, but I had no idea what that was, like the show. I didn't watch it. I didn't know these people. I had no idea who CT was. I had no idea who DM was. I had no idea who any of these people were. Um, and even though, like, I'm on a reality show and I don't know, I'm not a very, I'm a very introverted person. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm brave. But um, a lot of the outgoing things that, like, you've seen and stuff, I needed some liquid courage, like, for a lot of those things. Like, I'm not a very out, like, so I arrived and, like, uh, a lot of my castmates who were there didn't have a problem, like, meeting other individuals and, like, um, intermingling and stuff. And, like, I did. I was, like, immediately shut down and I was, like, uncomfortable and had a lot of anxiety. And so I was, like, reading a book by myself <laughs> at the beginning. And the first person who came up to me, and this is prior to, like, anything being filmed, this is, like, the night before we started filming, um, was CT. And he came up to me um, when I was reading this book and sat down in front of me and, like, was was nice to me I mean to be honest with you he was nice to me and like his intentions were never good with me <laughs> like this was all a calculated weird thing like no matter how you feel about him 
I know that like he has so many fans like so it's like really uncomfortable for me to like get into this but anyways he was nice to me and he was the first person to talk to me he sat down and he was like asking me what what book I was reading and stuff so um in my head I'm like a fresh 22 22 year old um I'm scared I don't know any of these people like in my head I thought okay there's just somebody that like is just gonna be nice to me you know what I mean and like it just wasn't the case (laughs) um once we started filming like it just kind of like I don't know um When he was like around me, he was nice to me and he was like acting like he was my friend and um, just that sort of thing. Like it was never like me chasing him down, like trying to like have a relationship with him. Like not, it was never like that. Like there was definitely like a lot of alcohol and like I, I was like sexually attracted to him because like I didn't know him. I didn't know like the story of any of this. And honestly, I think the only reason I was, like, attracted to him at all was because I was scared. And he was the first person who was nice to me. That's why I, like, fixate on, like, the fact that he was, like, the one who came up to me. Um, So, anyways, like, there was, like, brief interactions. And then I don't even remember, like, specifically, like, a lot of, like, the de- it, it was never as serious as like any of it was on t- like it didn't deserve as much time on tv as it got like and it only got that way because <sighs> okay i'm sorry i need a second oh, it's fine. Yeah. i'm trying yeah. to be like off topic but like um And I really want you to include this particular part that I'm about to say, like, in this, because it's important to me that people know that I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, as soon as they saw, like, me and CT even talking to each other, I was immediately casted as going to be the disposable whore on television. And, like, I know that sounds really abrupt and, like, It sounds like, well, how could they have such bad intentions? And like, you know, you did, you made decisions, but like I, the way that I was portrayed was like, I was this disposable garbage, dumb, crazy, like skank. And like, I do think that this only happens to women. Like, I don't ever see them making a deal about this to men. Um, I, I was portrayed as that way as like the person who was trying to interfere with DM and him and like this pristine relationship and that was just not what I was doing it was never what I what I was doing um but they they typecasted me as that and that's what they made me look like on television and so um while CT is not my favorite person and I I don't think that he's a nice person um because he could have easily said something that would have shut it down. And instead, he he um, also antagonized me, like, on Twitter. And he could have easily done something, like, too. He had that power. Um, and he could have easily said, like, just leave her alone. Like, every everybody on that season, I think, knew that I was, like, devastated by it. I didn't leave my room, like, after the, like the drunk fight with him like after I like got drunk and like didn't control my drinking that's my responsibility I completely take responsibility for that um but I just shut down like I wanted to leave the show and to be honest with you the only person who talked me into staying and they didn't air it was DM she came up to me and we had a uh, this is why like this is it's so hard because I don't want people to think that like I ever had bad feelings about her I didn't even know that like her and CT were like I didn't even know any of this like they made it seem like I was mad about them but I was just wasted I was freaking wasted I had I didn't even know like the sequence that you see on tv like it didn't happen like that um so that's another thing and it's like 
then you're repetitively saying these things and you sound crazy because you're like, this didn't happen this way. But so DM actually had come up to me and um, I was, I had all my bags packed and I was, I was about to leave. And um, because I, I, I just like, I couldn't handle this at all. And she came up and sat next to me and she was very nice to me and she was very kind to me. And she said um, that I shouldn't let, you know, don't let them like push you out of here is basically what she said to me. And we were not like friends or anything like that, but she was very kind to me in that moment. And like, I will, I remember that, you know? So yeah, I mean, that is what it is what it is. And then I stayed for like a couple more days. Right. Well, on the whole perspective and spectrum of, um, you know, obviously his fans, their fans, obviously the two of them and then the two of them collectively have a lot of people that are fans of them and support them. So honestly, it could have been anybody in your position. You know what I mean? And a lot of times fans watching these reality shows, which are typically hours upon hours, months of filming condensed into one hour on your TV screen one day, once every week. That's the version that, you know, they're getting. A lot of times fans see these larger than life personalities on their screens and then think like they're immune to like, you know, hate, negativity. And then the ones that they do side with, they feel as though they need to go like the extra inch to like support them and then like go after the people that are quote unquote opposed to them you know what I mean so that's what I think it was as far as like the whole CT and uh you know DM and like maybe fans saying negative stuff to you um I think it could have been anybody in your position you know but I do agree with you in the aspect of it is the women on this show that you know do get the kind of shit end of the stick in the uh that whole department yeah there was definitely um, not a lot of empathy for, like, making a mistake or anything like that. Um, and, and like I said, I take, like, um, alcohol was provided. I drank it. You know, I, I didn't know how to drink then, like, at that age. I drank too much. I mean, but it, it was crafted so that I would definitely look like the disposable Poor. And like, um, I hate to use that language, but like, it's, it's true. Um, and it's a trope that like, I've seen people discussing that happens to them too on reality shows. So like, I know it's a constant thing, but I never thought like, I never saw myself as like being in that situation um, ever. Um, so it, it traumatized me for years. Like, I won't even lie to you. Um, it traumatized me for years. I had a lot of anxiety um, because of it, uh, because like, you know, I'd get to know somebody and then they would start showing me videos on YouTube of like myself, like, and I, it, it, it ruined my life, like in a lot of ways. And like, again, you know, I had a part to play in that. Like, I'm, I'm not like not taking responsibility for it, but like, I don't think that like the production is like the, the we're commodities like to them, like to the show and everything else. And I think that it's pretty obvious like they treat us like commodities and like not like human beings. Um, just in the, even in the way that like when I like lost that last, um, what do they call the thing where you're battling <laughs> at the end? <laughs> what do they call that? <laughs> what? Elimination. Yeah. So I had no business being on the show, just so you know. Like I am not athletic at all. Like there's there's no reason for me to have been on here. Um, but just like at the end when I lost that elimination, I have a medical condition. Like I, ha I have a anxiety. I have really low blood pressure and I have thalassemia minor, and which is like a lack of hemoglobin, which is, which is oxygen. And so when I was hanging upside down <laughs> for that long, I got really sick and like I can laugh about it now but the way they like portrayed me on TV and like with like TJ and like I don't know how who he is and like I don't know anything about him but with the way that he like laughed at me and like 
made a joke about me smoking. Like, yeah, I, I was a smoker at the time. But, like, all of that was just, like, again, like, fitting with this, like, whole idea that I was just this disposable, like, like, like a joke. Like, I was a joke to these people, you know? So it, it was just. Yeah, and not for nothing, too. Like, I I was going to bring that up anyway, Um, you know that was a little foul, you know, like, that was a little weak, it wasn't, like, an aspect of, like, you were just, like, oh, you know, I don't want to do this and quit, like, you actually at least tried, you know, so for him to kind of, like, pour salt on the wound a little bit there was just, like, really, like, come on. I tried, and I tried when I was, like, I was, I was, like, in, I was in, like, duress after what happened, like, with with CT I was like in a panic attack all the time because like I was so uncomfortable so like me staying there like I'm surprised that I stayed there like yeah. as an adult now because like um yeah I I'm surprised I stayed it really was DM talking to me but um he the yeah the whole thing um Mike like beginning to end the way that they treated me and then the way that they portrayed me um right down to that like right down to just like discarding the fact that I was having like a pan I didn't have a lot of oxygen (laughs) because I was hanging upside down it was cruel it was like unnecessarily cruel to me yeah so there was no anybody else that you uh felt like on the cast or the show the rivals um that was like comforting you at all because I felt like from watching it at least it seemed like Teresa to some extent had like some type of regard for you yeah um she definitely spoke to me and like was nice to me if I like I kind of would go into her room sometimes and like I had nowhere else to go like I was like I was afraid on the show honestly like I was shy and like afraid like, without any of this stuff happening, like, I was just really nervous, um, so I, like, she was really, she was nice to me, like, I have no complaints about her at all, um, she was really nice to me, but, but honestly, nobody, especially after the stuff started happening with CT, like, I don't even think people wanted to, like, people immediately just saw me as, like, one of those, like, they, like, I don't think anybody wanted to, like, get to know me, or, like, as a person, um, so, yeah, Mm-hmm. Jordan, honestly, I think I remember that Jordan was really nice to me. Um, especially he jumped over, I think, when I was sick at the end. He took me to an ambulance. Like, he actually jumped over the little, the I don't know, there was, like, a bridge or something. Um, and took me to ambul- ambulance and was really nice to me. And, like, he, I was a brat to him, like, so much. Like, I didn't necessarily deserve his empathy and stuff. And he was, I think he knew mentally where I was. And I think he felt bad for me. Because I think he knew that I was spiraling and I shouldn't have even been on that show. Like, I'm pretty sure. So I do remember him being, like, he, you know, he didn't, like, spend extra time with me. Because, like, he was doing his own thing at the show. But, like, I, I do remember him, like, doing that. Yeah. So what steps did you potentially take like obviously like after the thing aired and then you were getting like you know maybe some hate from some fans like what steps did you (laughs) what what steps did you uh next take after that obviously you know you went off the grid from the social media aspect of things did you like uh start going to therapy and stuff like that yeah so um after the after the challenge I took quite a few years to like Um, unfortunately it's not like a, a, an immediate turnaround story where like I got better and like everything. I actually like, it took me like three to four. I spent quite a few years, um, drowning in like whatever I was feeling. Um, I like, don't get me wrong. Like I, it was like, not like my whole life was like bad choices, but like I was, depressed for a very long time and it took me until I moved to Virginia I moved to Virginia and to be honest with you I had um I had a couple suicide attempts like 
prior, like, and in the year after this. See ya. I'm going to start over so you don't have to hear him on there. But, like, I had a couple suicide attempts. Um, and then after after that, the last the last time that I was really considered, I, I, I was very serious about killing myself. Um, and I, I feel very comfortable to talk about this now. Um, I was, you know, in a car and I was going to drive into like a wall or a tree or something. That's like what I was going to do. Um, I was really drunk. So I had posted something on social media that like alerted somebody to like what I was doing or like made someone concerned. And then um, the like people sent police out and they, they ended up like finding me somehow. I have no idea how um, before I could actually like do it. Um, and then I stayed in a hospital for a little while. Um, and after that, I like was determined to get my life together entirely. Um, I couldn't continue living the way that I was as far as like, I hated every moment of every day. You know, I was like, I was, I was a very lost and confused person. And so I was like sick of it. I wanted to take the reins of my own life. I was sick of hating myself. I hated myself. Um, and I did, and I did like years of therapy. I had gotten on a medication at that, at that time. I'm not anymore, which is fine. I eventually got off of it, but, um, I went to so a lot of therapy and I, I love who I am now. <laughs> like I honestly, um, I can, I can cope better with everything. I, I understand all the emotions that I'm having. I deal with things healthily. I don't have like toxic uh, habits. It, it, it's my whole life is different. And it's because I took responsibility for the way that the direction that my life was going. Mm -hmm. For you, I definitely see, um, you know, you were in a lot happier of a place. I'm so happy for you. And I'm glad that like you were able to take those steps. And I think, um, you know, this was like really good for you to, um, you know, do this. This is like the whole premise of like why I do this, you know, it's to like, you know, kind of see people for who they truly are and allow people to like freely talk about, you know, their time on the show um, in this aspect, but also from the aspect of like, you know, what may be dealing, what they're dealing with mentally, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I, I was really excited for this opportunity for you. <laughs> like honestly i'm sorry that it's not like super happy <laughs> well, oh no it's, no it's yeah, an you're... opportunity for me to i spent a, a really long time trying to disassociate from this and like not think about it because it kind of like it it triggers really uncomfortable feelings in me which like now i know how to deal with but then i didn't know how to deal with um so my intentions with this was that I am going to give birth to a son in November and I wanted the last thing like that's out there about this whole sphere of, um, you know, the show and like the other show, the other show um, to be an adult looking back and reflecting and someone who's grown a lot in like is able to say goodbye to it and, and, and go forward positively, you know, with my life. So yeah. Sorry, get, get me choked up over here. <laughs> no, but, no. Like, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't think about just like that. That is really the reason why I did it because like the last thing that I didn't want the last thing to, for this person to see of me online is like an unexplained video, you know, or something, you know, well, you're you're doing great. Um, I want you to keep your head up. Like seriously, you're you're doing great. You know, from speaking to you, you're um, you know, definitely in a very great place right now. Um, I am, even though this is like an emotional conversation, I. <laughs> it's a conversation that was needed. This is exactly what I was hoping would uh, come from it. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. I have um, a, like a healthy relationship. I'm like so happy. I'm going to have a baby. I'm on the a track to be a teacher, um, so it's like it's great. Life is good. <laughs>
Well, uh, it was such a pleasure um, getting to speak with you. I'm so well. I'm feel, I feel very um, you know flattered and grateful that you were able to give me your time. Honestly, because um, you didn't have to do this, but um, you know I'm glad that uh, you actually you know took the time to do this. Yeah, sorry you had to like chase me around for a while. Yeah, just... you know. <laughs> Chasing isn't that bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll let you go. Um, I'll let you know, obviously, when this is up. It was uh, great speaking to you, like I said. And um, keep up with uh, the positivity and um, happiness that life's brought you. And um, I'm wishing for nothing but the best and, uh, you know, good vibes coming your way.